This is Coogan Cassis Rifle TV in association with MTK Global. We're in Belfast. I'm joined by the self-proclaimed king of Belfast, the Big Rogi, the one and only, Martin Rogan. How are you? Good on, Kev. It's good to see you. Good to see you, mate. I've always wondered why fighters wear sunglasses. I like people looking at my eyes. <laughs> I want them to look real deep into my eyes. <laughs> How are you? Get on, buddy. How's life? Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Yeah? Yeah, far and away, really. It's good today. I was down here, it just, we've seen each other as we glanced past. We did. We brushed shoulders. We brushed shoulders. Obviously, you tried to use a bit of force. It didn't work. Um, for the weigh-ins today, it's pretty exciting, you know. I was on the the opposite side of the, where I wanted to be. I wanted to be up there, but I had to be down there. So. It's been two years since there's been um, World Championship boxing here in Belfast. Mm -hmm. um, so, I'm not saying they've been starved of boxing, but boxing at the, the highest level uh, mm -hmm. hasn't really been here in Belfast in that time. So, yeah. Ryan Burnett is to be successful this weekend. Yeah. Then him alongside Frampton Absolutely. can uh, obviously be the push for the, for the immediate future. Yeah, well, Carl obviously, you know, has been doing, is, is doing so well, done and doing so well, um, and opened up in, in that division, you know, before Carl came along with, with the, the exception of myself, obviously, in a different weight division, the heavyweight, I had struck gold with the public, and, you know, obviously, a boxing, you know, there's going to be one winner, but with young Carl coming through and took it to great heights and working with everybody or Eddie Hearn and stuff. And now young Ram Burnett's coming through. It'd be good to see that if he lifts his title, you know, it's another one in the bag. It's such a it's fantastic like to have so many weight divisions winning so many. And and in the UK alone over there, in Manchester and London and everywhere, Peter's Brian or Eddie Hearn. You know, Bram Peters has Katie Taylor and they're pushing towards the world title. And it seems to be the capital of boxing now, doesn't it? Like, it seems to be, and in, in we're, the, we're the dominating force that we always bring great fights to. And we've got the world world champions now with Carl and, and young Ram Burnett, so on tomorrow night. It's been three years. Three years for my get punched in the face. Probably. Three or four years? Three, three. years. 2014. Michael, Michael Spratt. Sprott, yeah. I will find you. And when I do, Michael, you won't fight me again. I've asked him a few times. That was the Super 8 tournament you entered. Super 8, yes. Yeah. Um, I took the fight, and there's never a question mark over anything that I do. You go, this is a sport that you go in, and there is no explanation marks. You go in, you fight. If you, if you can't do it, don't make excuses. Um, I fought in the Super 8. I come off a terrible, um, terrible defeat um, to Ergen Tamper. Uh, Ergen Tamper. Ergen Tamper. Yeah. And I remember after I got hit, and I remember saying to McCormick at that time, something wasn't right. So I'm not going to dwell on this. But I knew that night that something wasn't right because it was, I just knew that something wasn't right. And Michael Spratt, I, was, I went and got my, my jaw, I had to get two operations on my jaw. Um, it was all sorted out. The last operation was in the January, and I flew out three months later. I should, probably shouldn't have been boxing for at least 10 months, 12 months because of the break. It was an open fracture. And I fought Michael Spratt. The first thing Michael tried to do, Michael, I'm, I'm coming after you. The first thing he tried to do was hit me a merciful hook to try and break my jaw again. <laughs> But unfortunately, it didn't work. And he beat me by a point, and hats off to him, he beat me, and that was it, fair and square. But the, 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 go back to what we said about Ergen Tamper, I don't make excuses, but the fact that he beat David Price after it and hit him with a left hand, with, and David Price knew himself that something wasn't right. When I was in New Zealand, I spoke to Michael Spratt, and he says, Michael, you fought Ergen Tamper, as I did. You were stopping the first round. What did you make his? Ask him. Andy is trainer. And they said the same thing. Something wasn't right. Punched far too far. It was, it was like a, it was like a steel bar hitting you over the face, and that there, it, physically and mentally, being a fighter, it, it really hurts, you know. But physically, obviously, 
But um, but you can't cry over spilled milk. It's done and dusted. And then he was caught, then he was banned, and there's so many others that are getting caught and banned as well. Um, but three years ago was my last with Michael Spratt. And I've been training away here in A1 Academy in Belfast, trying to get myself back in and get a few fights. How old are you now? Over 21. Let's move on. Next question. <laughs> How old are you? Over 21. Is that negative? Come on, it's not, you're not a woman. Is I'm, not, a, it's not, I'm not saying to you, but like, you're not no, going to ask is, a woman. This, no, is right. with a this is with the difficulty of you asking me, right? I, I appreciate your question, and I will answer it, right? <laughs> Sorry, hold on. Believe it or not, who that is? Golden Boy Promotions. Hello, how you doing? Yes, we'll talk about that fight after. Yeah, I'm with Cassius, you know? I'll bring him along when we don't worry about it. <laughs> yes, we'll get that fight tied in, yes. Okay, no problem. Okay, that'll do. Oscar. That's him. Oscar, yeah. But anyway, where were we? Your age. He is. Right. The thing is with sport, which I have noticed in sport, with managers, with coaches, and not just boxing, in a lot of sports, rugby, uh, football, gilly football, hurling, all sports. The coaches and managers have a job to put out their best team and to put the best things out, right? I have noticed, and without any fear of contradiction, that they are dr drilling into people's heads from the hip 30. They're near done, they're near done, they're near done, they're near done. How can a man tell another man when he's near done, when they're not in their shoes and they're not doing the things that they're doing? Obviously, there's people that are going to be they haven't got the legs to go on, they haven't got the stamina, they haven't got this. That's fine, I agree with that totally. But not every beast is the same. We're all different beasts. I'm a different beast. I train with guys in the gym that are 21 and 23 and they can't stay with me. I spar with guys that can't stay with me still. So what does it boil down to? Is it, is it the number that is your target or is it the fact that they're scared of you? So you asked me a question. I turned 46 on the 1st of May. I don't know about me, it's, don't I look well, don't I look well. Michael Spratt, I'm coming after you. So, since 2014, yeah. why, why have you got an urge now, or have you had these urges in the last three years? Why now do you think that you would like to? Well, it's not so much the urge that I, I, I want to come back now or anything else. Um, I put an awful lot into boxing, the boxing's been good to me and I've been good to boxing. I've been good to the public and the public's been good to me, obviously not all of the public. But I'm sure you're going to get that in sport and you're going to get criticism no matter what you do. But I love, I, I love boxing, I love being in the sport of, of fighting, I, I enjoy it so much, I enjoy the training, right? Hasn't the fact I've taken, it's taken me three years. The fact is that no, I couldn't get any fights. So. What do you have you actively tried to get fights? Yeah, actively try to get fights, yeah. yeah. Actively try to get fights. I've been offered fights recently, more recently, in Poland and a few other places. I've been offered fights. But the, we'll go back to the question that you asked me. What age are you? So people don't look at the physical side of you. They look at your number. And then when they earn that number, that's where they draw their conclusion of, no, you're no good. You get me? Hmm. So that's 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 the, 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 the last three years is why I haven't. Because nobody's at, nobody has even I've been, there's been so many Sean Turner was on shouting and bawling about what he was gonna do to me and, and this, that and the other and he's gonna squash me and smash me and, and everything else. That's that's for him well doing all that shit on Twitter. He's been very quiet recently after getting beat by a journeyman. You know, he's very quiet now. So and the, his defeat, I wouldn't laugh at or joke about, because the man that he's fighting had two arms and two legs, and, and that's the way he obviously wasn't on his game plan, or obviously the guy was better than him. But where does, where does that leave the question that you just asked me? Is it about inactivity, that you can't get fights? Is it your number of your age? Or is it that promoters just sort of, you've lost, cheerio, goodbye, and the sport of boxing just keeps carrying on? which it could be all three in, in one. I don't know, but I have tried. Looking at the, the current scene yeah. here, yeah. or across the, the UK, Okay. what's an ideal fight for you to get back into? Get back into it? Yeah, what's an ideal name? What's an ideal fight? Because 
someone who's been in the ring with all the fighters you've been in the ring with, mm -hmm. you're not going to come in against the the Latvian plumber. No. Um, I, I think there's a... You have to be realistic about it too, because he's told you, like, there's no point in me saying Anthony Joshua as much as you would love to say it. It's pointless because Anthony Joshua's up there and I'm here. He's, he's, the, he's the real deal at the minute. And I'm, I'm, I'm the word. You know, there's a lot of guys out there. You know, there's Dave Allen. Dave Allen, terrible nice kid, lovely guy, has the same personality. I mean, he, he cracks jokes. He's probably not as funny as me, but he's a nice guy. Why should I not be fighting him? He's the one that, that Eddie has coming through. So why not put the test to me with him? You have Huey Fury. You have Tyson Fury. I don't know. Tyson, I don't even know if Tyson's fighting again or what's he doing or anything like that. But you've got loads, loads of guys. Lucas Brown, Big Daddy Brown. Big Daddy Brown comes on Twitter and starts firing abuse at me, right? And on Instagram. Then I fired it back and then he blocked me. So, you know, what was all that about? You know, if you fire a bit of it, I was only having a bit of a crack and all. He wants to fight, I'll fight him, not a problem, Lucas Brown, bring it on. Seriously, bring it on. I'm your man, I'll fight you any day of the week. You know, there's loads of guys. There's James Tony just won the, the WBF full title. I'll fight James Tony. Do you know what I mean? It is, do we go down to the, do we go down to the, the, the 21 year olds only fight up to 28 year olds and you know, 46 year olds only fight guys in the bracket of 48 to 44. Is, is, is now boxing a bracket of the age? Or is it, is the man good enough to, to beat you? Go back in, in time, George Foreman. You know, I'm no George Foreman because I'm Martin Rogan. But age is, not, age, age is not a disability. Age is a number. It's not a disability. You don't go to the doctor and say, Doctor, I'm 46 years of age. Have you any antibiotics for it? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's, that's, that's it. If Eddie Hearn, Eddie Hearn's a good man. He does great things for boxing. He's, he's very, very smart. He does a lot of good things. You can even listen to it. It tells. Eddie's a man. Why, why doesn't Eddie get me to fight the Avon? Or get me to fight all the other fighters? Lewis, or, Ortez? The King Kong? Do you know what I mean? There's loads of fights that these people need tested. Or, are the, or is it the fact that they don't want them tested? Why don't you speak to him this weekend? Uh, why doesn't he speak to me? <laughs> why don't you speak I'm the fighter. He's why, a problem. Why, why without us, without us fighters. Why don't you speak to each other this weekend? Without, without those fighters, he ain't got no promotion. So if you, if you pictured this year, and, and Addy's brilliant about to do, promoters, a lot of promoters, they're all great. I wouldn't run on them down because, you know, Frank Warren, when I boxed in the prize fighter, I won the prize fighter. It was Frank Warren that snatched me up and took me to fight Audley Harrison, which I was supposed to be beaten there too, by this A force, right? But I beat him. Then I go on to fight a guy that was never knocked down or knocked out for the Commonwealth and European heavyweight belt. I beat him, knocked him out in the 11th round, the first man to stab him. But I didn't get the European belt, so realistically, I was a Commonwealth and European heavyweight champion. I should have been fighting for a world title. So I ask you, promoters, where's the justice in boxing for me? Well, if you were to not fight again, for example, <coughs> hypothetically, hypothetically, okay, and he was to live to 100 years old, I hope he lived to 150, but would you look back and think you wasn't satisfied with your career? Would you think, I did what I did? No, I'm, I'm very satisfied with what I've done, Cassius. I'm very, very satisfied with what I've done because I come out of the woodwork from never boxing at all, completely of, of a completely different sport. I, this was completely... I went in, I think it was October 1989, and it was before, just before I turned 30 and took up boxing. And I accomplished there. I was the Irish champion two times, an Ulster champion twice. I won all that, the box for Ireland, the captain to Ireland. So I've done an awful lot in the presence of amateur. And then moved into the pro ranks, and I, bought, I, I fought Audley Harrison, I fought Matt Skelton, I fought the heavyweight champion of the world, Tyson Fury. Um, I, you know, I've been there. I'm very satisfied in that, in, that, in that question there when you asked me. But the one thing I'm, I'm not satisfied with is I haven't satisfied myself because I'm not finished. 
Do you know what I mean? I'm not finished. I, I really love boxing. I love the sport of boxing. It should be more encouraging because the more that I keep doing it, then the more it'll encourage other people to stay at it and providing that they're medically fit and medically okay to fight, then I think they should be given that opportunity. Maybe Eddie Hearn should speak to me as I would speak to him and get an over 40s competition. Over 40s praise fighter. Huh? The legend, the legend of the ring. I think he's done with price fighter, I think he is too. But it was very successful. It, it was, was very yeah, good. Absolutely. It was excellent. And he's, he is the, he's, he's, he's a very smart man. He knows what he's doing. He's not stupid. You see the way he puts things together. It's, it's not these small events, you know, so it's quite good. Sure. Yeah, but like, you know, the reason that's that, I think there's more of me. And, you know, every fighter says the same. I'm sure Barry McGuigan and all the fighters long before him, Paddy McGuire, all the guys from, from here have all said the same thing. I'm sure Card from you know, Card's you know, up there, he's still works out, he's still active, he's made a lot of money, he's, he's entitled to make a lot of money for his children, his wife, his family. But he'll not be said, even whenever he leaves, he, he decides to exit the ring, he still won't be happy, the fact that he has to leave it all behind. Do you know what I mean? he still have that urge, and we all have that. But this urge that I have is not, it's not just, you know, I want to just get in there for the crack and all. No, I'm, I'm seriously, I want to fight. Seriously, genuinely want to fight. And, you know, test me. Test me. 2012, five years ago, like you said, you faced Mr. Tyson Fury mm -hmm. at, the, at the Odyssey it was back then. Yeah. Renamed now. SSE. SSE. Um, what have you made of the whole <coughs> Tyson Fury situation over the last two years? Because it's been literally the heights and, and the lows in Tyson Fury's career in the last year and a half. Um, he, he, he beat the man, didn't he? He beat the, he beat, he beat the man. Um, I, knew, I, I had a funny feeling he was... He's a good mover for the size of him. He can move, he can switch head, he can do it. And he punches, he punches, he punches hard. Not over, over hard, but it's the fact of the punches that, that they have, you know. Um, and the fight that I have on the body shot, which I did recover, unfortunately. And I, I'll state this here, and maybe somebody else can go back and, and fire the question under, underneath your, underneath your, your video. Um, the rules of boxing is two, three men allowed in the ring. Referee, two fighters. A doctor's not even allowed in the ring. All right? And it's up to the referee to call the doctor in the ring. All right? I took a body shot from Tyson Fury, went down, took my professional eight count, which you're trained to do, right? And got back up, prepared to fight again. All right? Now, I know it was an overwhelming um, amount of energy that was going on within the place. But the fact is, I get back up. Why was my corner man allowed to get into the ring to stop a fight that I didn't want to stop? Why was he allowed to do it? That's the question I asked. If the rules are rules, why was he not put into the ring? What was you told about that situation? I, I, I haven't told anything. I, I took a terrible lot of abuse from it. I took a terrible amount of abuse from it. I got accused of a lot of things. So that, that, I, that I, I took a dive and for the sixth round and this, that and the other and the boogies had closed all their, their batting shafts or something for the sixth round or whatever the case may be, I don't know. But that's, that's what was pushed out. And it was very, very hurtful for me and my family for what was being said and what has still been said and was getting said up until a few months ago, abuse on Twitter. But she just water off a duck's back now because they don't know and they've never been in the ring and she just button it that they don't know. But the question is still that that's the only thing that the only thing that, that, that the referee obviously done a good job. Tyson done a good job. I done my job. I get in and fought the guy. You know, I was underdog anyway. He was whatever a hundred or one day a hundred to to, to 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 manage me anyway. Um but I went in and fought him. But why did my quarter man I just I'm just curious and nobody's ever answered. Why did the corner man get in the ring? Because I asked him, why did you get in? But well, you shouldn't have been in. I was up, I was up on, took my coat, ready to fight, and he jumps in. Why was he not told to get out of the ring? 
because no other, no other corner man has ever done it or would be allowed to do it. They'd be totally out of the ring. You're not allowed in the ring. That's the rules. So it just annoys me the fact that I was ready to keep. Con I was ready to continue. And because if you stood up now, I mean you were missing, and I touch for you, and touch for you in the stomach, and win you. You go down and go ah, back up again, and you continue. It's 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 really it happens. These things happen. It happens in sparring. It happens in. Uh, it happens day to day, but that that here that was the biggest chance of my life to make the biggest thing in my life for my family and kids, and not no through, no fault of my own was the fight stopped and it shouldn't have been stopped. I don't believe it should have been stopped. Just so you know, if you punch me in the stomach, I'd break your jaw. Just so you know. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was five years ago, and these, <coughs> these questions are still going on in your mind about yeah. that situation being unanswered as far as you're concerned. Yeah. And it may be the case that you may never get the answer. No, no. It just, it just, no. I may never, as you say, but it just hurts. You know, just, it's just annoying because it, rules are rules. And, you know, I just think it was hard done by, to be quite honest. You know, especially fighting Tyson Fury, who goes on to be the heavyweight champion of the world, Ring Magazine, and you know, you've, 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 uh, you've had the opportunity to grace the ring with them, and, and you do it, and unfortunately, you know what I mean? It, it didn't turn out the way that I wanted, but as much as you want to continue as a fitter, look at Anthony Joshua. Took the shot, goes down, Gets back up in the sixth round, goes back into his corner. His corner man didn't jump in the ring to help him or anything else. He was allowed to get up off the ground and he was allowed to go back to his corner. He was allowed to continue. So he was hurt. Then Clitz go to see him. He gets strapped. So if everybody has, if all trainers or all coaches or all whoever's involved in are allowed this year to jump into a ring and stop a fight, where is boxing going? Mm. Or where can it go? That's what the referees are for. Don't steal away from a referee. And I think on that one occasion, which I'll give to your is his, his, his dues, I think it was overwhelmed because we're not going on in the thing, but I think it was overwhelmed because it happened that, the way it all happened, you know, maybe the rules are different in Irish boxing, I don't know. I don't think so. But that's the way it goes. I just take it in the chin. I've taken it in the chin. I'm not, don't get me wrong, I'm not unsatisfied. I, I'm proud of the fact that I've raced the ring with the heavyweight champion of the world. I've been there. Just the fact that it could have been on that, or it could have been on that longer, and something could have happened if we just had a caught him, because that's what the whole deal was to try and get inside him to get one on him. But it didn't work out. How much does it aggravate you, though, that people suggesting I didn't realise as soon as was a few weeks or whatever that suggest that you threw that fight? And, you know. Well. <coughs> First of all, it's very, very annoying when it comes from a rugby player. He's, he's the one that, that, that nailed it, was a rugby player who started it on Twitter that night, Stephen Ferris, who, who uh, put on Twitter that I had done this. Now, how he knew that I was going to do this or anything else is beyond me because I didn't know. So how he knew is beyond me. Nobody else knew as far as I'm concerned. Or, or anything to do with, with batting or anything else even took place. But he put it on Twitter that night. The newspapers contacted me the next day because they heard of what he had done and they wanted to follow up on the story. And I pulled him out of it because I told the papers I didn't want to know, I didn't want to know anything about it. And he even, I, I had him on the phone and he admitted to what he had done, put it on Twitter and started it. He started the rumor. And from that, it snowballed. Snowballed. So I took the blunt end of somebody else's drunken comment. But listen, that's the way it goes. I have to accept it. We all make comments that we shouldn't do, and we all do things when people's having a few drinks. But that there was a bit hurtful because I'm a professional sportsman, and coming from a professional sportsman who played for Ulster, um, it was a wee bit more of a, it was a bit more hurtful coming from you know. The, the ordinary Joe in the street, the fire comments all the time and a wee bit of abuse, it's, it's understandable. But when it's coming from an or sportsman, professional sportsman, 
that doesn't know nothing and doesn't follow boxing and never did. For him to, to make a comment like that, for the snowball the way that it did, was unfair because he, obviously he has a lot more followers than me than what I do on Twitter. So the story carries a lot quicker, you know, but that's the way it goes. You have to take it in the gym. So what now then? You're gonna... Me and you. No, you're joking. I've retired. No, so am I. No, I'm, I, I'm 11 years younger than you and I've retired. Really? Yeah, I've retired already. Jeez, you've had a hard paper round. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I want McGregor first. Let's talk Conor McGregor. I want to batter him. I want to batter him and put him in his boxing thing that he has in his head. He's not a boxer. He shouldn't be entitled to box Floyd Mayweather. There's guys that are coming up the whole way about the ladder that have boxed all their life and they couldn't get a crack at, at anybody. So why is he allowed? I'm not allowed. If I go and get £10 million, I win the lottery, I'm not allowed to go up and challenge Anthony Joshua. If, I, if I've never boxed before, I'm a skateboarder. I'm not allowed to box Anthony Joshua for a heavyweight title. Come on. Get realistic. Shouldn't be allowed to happen. He's not a boxer. He's not even in the ratings. He's not in the rankings. No disrespect to Conor McGregor. But stop talking shit. You'd love to batter him, though. I, I wouldn't love to batter him. I would enjoy it. <laughs> Connor, I will find you too. <laughs> no, I just no. Realistically, it shouldn't happen. It shouldn't happen. If if the, the the councils or boards that are involved in boxing, which they do their best to protect boxing, why are they allowing this to happen? Why are they allowing this to happen? Is you know, is it money talks? It seems to be that money is talking rather than anybody's health or safety. Is, is even coming into the picture. It shouldn't be allowed. You know, the, if, if, now if, right, okay, if it's allowed, right, fair play to Conor McGregor and fair play to Floyd Mayweather, best of it is, go for it. Probably be entertaining, whatever. People are always going to have their, their, their comments about it. But if I was on a council, me personally, I would like to think that I would say, well, you're going to have to fight the number one in the UK? You're going to have to fight the European champion? Or you're going to have to fight to prove yourself that you're worthy of, e worthy of even getting in the ring with a guy at 49 and 0? The man that was a, a legend on, a, on, his, on his own ground. The Pacquiao, the machine, flying machine, couldn't do Ricky Hatton, couldn't do nothing, couldn't put a dent in this man. Alvarez. Alvarez, the whole lot of them. And, and he's still there just a. What's that fit? There you are. There you are. See you later, if I are. What's going on here? Well, fuck it. You know, fuck me. Come on. Eddie Earns said something quite interesting when he was breaking down the level of where Floyd Mayweather is to not just Conor McGregor, but anyone who's sort of obviously a star of the UFC but coming into to box for the first time professionally. Um, would Conor McGregor win a British title? The best in Britain at his weight, would he beat him? You're asking me? Well, I'm just saying in general, would he be good enough to win? I don't think so. Title? I don't think so. I don't even think he would win an ice title. And there's, there's, more, there's more challengers, obviously, with the population in England, in the UK, for the British title or the Commonwealth title. The Irish title, because Ireland's so small, there's a, less the number of fighters at, that, at his weight. Will he win an Irish title? No. Because he can't use his feet, he can't grab people, and he can't grapple. So no. And no disrespect to the UFC, the end of sports, not at all, the, the fantastic sports. But you're now dabbling in it. You know, if I'm a motor car racer, I'm not allowed to jump on a, a TT in the Isle of Man. And oh, I wouldn't allow you. So why is it allowed? Why is it allowed? It's, it's an insult to some boxers, maybe not everybody, but that's just my opinion. My opinion is probably, it's probably not even valued, so it doesn't really matter. But I mean, everyone's got mixed opinion about this, but ultimately, the ticket sales and more specifically the pay-per-view buys mm. will suggest that there is interest. huge worldwide interest in this mm. fight, regardless of whether 
people agree with it or not, they're going to watch this fight. Mm. Even but, if they're dead but, against it, yeah. you're going to watch it. Because well, they did say it. They said that, yeah. you know, yeah. first look, and if the tomb came on, it's, it's, it's entertainment. And the money involved is... And the money involved, and yeah. the religion, where you go, first look. But of me, personally, thinking, it's it's starvation the fighters that have been trying for years to get to that level. They even try and get knocking on the door for it even to be opened. That... Somebody can just walk in from another sport and do what they want. So it has that. It has that. Has that bit of ignorance about it too. But the best of luck, lads. Absolutely. I'll fight the winner. I will. He means it as well. <coughs> okay. Listen, I think we've done a solid half an hour here. Yeah? Too long. Never too long. We're going to edit that. Never. No. Happy yeah. birthday, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a fight. <laughs> Um, I'm going to attach a call out to this video, so we're going to go for Dave Allen here. Yeah, Dave Allen, but I don't really care who it is. Dave Allen, it, it, is, is, this is the, it, we'll go back to just a quick, quick, because I know you're, you're half an hour and you're, 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 you're speaking good. But this is the thing boxing's about characters, boxing's about skill, boxing's about, there's everything, right? You've got Carl Frampton who has developed the bee in the, a fantastic fighter. He can his distance, his judgment, and distance, his footwork, his, his strength, his power, everything he can. You've got all different fighters and doing all different things. Pardon me. I was before Carl came along. I filled the Odyssey of nine and a half thousand people, right, on several occasions, right. People came to me because I'm a working class, a working class man, and there's character about me, right. Boxing isn't all about big, heavy punch-ups and everything else. It is about winning the fight, but it's also about putting the, the best characters together that will make that show better. It's making a show better. It's giving the public what they want. Not what you want, it's what the public want. The public always want to see a good fight, and they always want to see characters coming in to fight. Guys that taxi drive. Guys that look after their kids every single day, and then they jump in the car and they go and earn a couple of quid. And they go down to sit in the gym, they tell a story, they crack jokes, and then they put on a pair of gloves and they go in and knock them out at everybody, and they get a couple of pound out of it. So it's characters, it's characters that make it. And obviously the, 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 the top fighters. Like you, both. Both. It's all round stud. All round. Actor, taxi driver, calls a cab. What's your favorite film? Ever. Favorite film ever? Ever. Ever. Comedy? No, not necessarily. Um, but I've said I've had so many films. Pick one. Just for the. I think the one with Jack Nicholson and Adam Sandler. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. Jack Nicholson and Adam Sandler. Nick, 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 uh, Jack Nicholson and Adam Sandler. They're in the 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 film. He had to go to anger management. I'm giving you a tip. But he called the film. Anger management. That's not that's not those two. It is. Anger management is Adam Sandler and Robert De Niro. Is that taxi or oh, he's coming? Is it not? He's coming now. He, he's coming. Is it not? It's Jack Nicholson. What am I thinking of? Robert De Niro and Adam Sandler, he's not in that. You're thinking of uh, Ben meet the Stiller. fuckers. Make ben, Stiller. Stiller. <laughs> ben Stiller, meet the fuckers. Get the fuck out of here. It's meet the fuckers. Yeah, I'm sorry, I got completely confused. Jack Nicholson there. and Adam Sandler. Jack Nicholson's facial expressions I'm are I'm never going to go film, film trivia with you. How are you getting away with this AF TV? Yeah, you don't even know who you no, acts in movies. <laughs> what to be of, fair, what though, we're going to film. What team of producer are you? <laughs> Do you know what? I've got completely two actors wrong, so that's the best thing. It was like, weren't even De Niro and, uh, and Stiller, not Nicholson and no. Stiller. Sorry. It's okay. Uh, that, that would be my best comedy. My best other film would be Hack Balls Ridge. Mm. Mm -hmm. Watch it, true story, amazing. One guy, what he's on, he's in the war. Real good, fate, real good movie. One hero, fantastic. Well, he was the hero of this this film. It's 
this guy who didn't leave, the rest of them all split, he stayed behind the jobs, and he fought, and he, he, I think he saved 69 people, lowering them down a thing that were all shot and had lost their limbs, and, and it was brilliant. Hack Balls Ridge, there you go, what's happening? Okay. Anything Martin, else? Martin. Oh, Cassius? Cool. Listen, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time and giving me the time for your, 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 your camp. <laughs> He tried to kiss me. <laughs> oh, kiss no, you thank you very also. much for your time. And thank you very much for putting me on your No, no your, problem. Your Listen, we, we never see you, so this is fine. I know. You may see more of me now that he watches us. Addy, you know we love you. Eddie will probably watch this, that's the thing. Addy, do I have to go through this all again? You're all right. <laughs> well, yeah, Addy. Right, thank, thank you very awesome. much for your time. Guys, thank Catch you very up much. you over the weekend. Thank you. Top man, anger management. Anger management. Watch Nick Jack Nicholson's facial expressions. Unreal. Nicholson, De Niro, and Sandler. No. Jack Nicholson, Adam Sandler. <laughs> Robert De Niro is. Robert De Niro. I'm joking now. Oh, uh, I fucked it up first, but there you go. Top man. Thank you.